four species of deer in a day. Paul Childerley puts the new Zeiss V6 scope through its paces. V6. <laughs> Plus, Roy Lupton is out for a quickie. He's daylight foxing before he starts nesting. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. to dusk. Four species is a plan. We're going to do roe deer and muntjac and fallow deer and the, the mighty Chinese water deer. So, um, But also try and do it in the different situations. So do a bit of open field, longer distance shooting on the Chinese, hopefully later on, fingers crossed. Up close with the muntjac, you know, different situations, stalking. Off the sticks, back through the wood. Um, and then also different, different light sort of situations breaking light this morning and hopefully this afternoon we get like last like last knockings on uh, on dusk That's well, first uh, road doe. Um, didn't shot many road deer off it yet this year, so come up to do, take out some of the does. Um, trying to select some of the ones that are a little bit older, um, ones without fawns, and uh, any sort of young, younger ones, tag ons as well. So we shot the one out here just on just on first light, which was great, good test for the for the scope. And uh, now we're going to go back. I'll make a decision in a minute whether I get onto the top here, see the wind is, whether we go up into the cherry plantation, stalk that through, or we go down to this belt on the bottom here. close quarters like stalking. I was carrying my gun, obviously on the safe, bolt closed. Carry it in right hand, the stick's ready. What we're doing now is going to stop this thick plantation. So the stuff's very close. So I've been having it on 12 power. So I'm going to wind it down to probably 8 power now. Get the red dot on so it picks up stuff really quick. Um, so it's just quite versatile for like Different situations. So this situation is different to what we were doing earlier with the more of an open landscape around the, around the woods with the arable fields, where this could be up close and and uh, you know it's like fast action. So you don't want to be searching for it. You want to find it, pinpoint it, right animal, and shoot it. Well, like I said, fast action. Just come down the path here, cut around the corner. There's a muntjac buck. Perfect. He's really close, he clocked us. Gun straight on the sticks, up, red dot. Let him turn sideways. Bang, straight down, perfect. This is a slightly older buck. You see he's, he's quite thick at the bases here. Um, real sort of like spaded out on the, on the antlers. When they get older, they tend to actually spade out. Um, so a flatter, paler. Uh, it's like a, a flatter blade of an antler rather than a circular antler. Um, no bright tines, but he's quite short in his, in his pedicles here. Um, obviously been fighting with a bit of a, a war wound here. Absolutely massive tusk for a muntjac. That's, that's big. Very big. Cross of the wild boar, that one is. <laughs> Very good. Cracking, cracking specimen. Really clean as well. What we're actually going to use this for, uh, the taxidermist has a, um, goes out to Europe and, and does a, a, a full body mount on a lunch jack and he's after, after one, so this looks actually perfect for that. A pair of our little friends. Big as well. 
As you can see, we're in the winter months and there's still ticks around. And that's why, you know, I'm wearing, you know, tick repellent clothing. Um, so it's a must have in, you know, in, in the trade or if you're out, out, out doing stalking or in a sense, even in the countryside where you know there's a lot of ticks because you know, the last thing you want is uh, catching any of these diseases. I'm getting a lot of trouble at the moment with uh, coursing and uh, part of the management is sort of like moving the animals and shooting the ones in the areas where they're they're showing up or, or drawing attention to themselves or even doing too much damage, whether it's to the, to the arable or the forestry or whatever. So yeah, so the plan is to basically just to take off one or two off of this, off of this bank here, it's right in view of the, the main road there. So it's like advertising for poachers. We pushed it then a little bit. They're on the they're on the limit and two shots, two deer straight on the deck. Brilliant. Really chuffed with that. Yeah, perfect rest. Clear as a bell. See where I was placing the bullet. Dot nice and fine. V six. <laughs> a brace of Chinese water deer, a buck and a doe. And um, both fawns, last year's fawns, great condition as you can see. And the buck is actually not a great specimen, not very much tusk showing. He should be so down to here somewhere by now. Um, so that's a really good cull animal to take out for me. Training. You can carry the gun and the stick, David. We're down the final little bit of land. Um, a group of fallow down the bottom of here. Now we've got to get into them, that's tricky. Many eyes looking at us. We've got to try and get down through this wood here to the bottom end and uh, try and ambush them. We're out on this granite grass, been out there all day, so hopefully we can get in, get into position and uh, try and try and get the fourth one of the day. So. See the black one on the left hand side of the group. Okay, here we go. Bit of pressure on that one because uh, they spotted us and also to accomplish the mission we set out first thing at four o'clock this morning. So yeah, really good. We shot the, the far top left hand animal, so they pushed back out in the field. Um, which would give us a couple more shots, but they didn't want to know today. They hit the cover, so they must have been ambushed before maybe. But no, really good. Day done? No, not yet, David. We're gonna maybe have a look for another fallow. Then we're gonna do some, uh, we'll try some calling quickly in the gardens, because they're having a bit of problem in the gardens with uh, the munjack eating the roses and the, Rhododendrons, so we're going to go in there and see if we can call a couple out and uh, see if we can cull a couple out there if we can. So we're here sat here waiting for a munch to come on this ride um, in this pagoda, and uh, this gentleman's walked up through. All the gates have been uh, signposted with shooting in progress. All the staff have been told that obviously we're in here stalking tonight, obviously the owners have been told. And that's just why it's important for people just to stay on the footpaths. You know, the footpaths are for a reason.
brave fellow. It was a real bonus in here, because obviously the fellow in here just devastate everything, so. Um, yeah, but it's brave to follow. We're going to pick them up, pull them to the edge. And then, not quite yet, David. <laughs> I want to just wait down at the bottom right there, because I'd like to shoot him on Jack down the bottom end. Because that's the wishes of the person who owns the ground. So. pushed the whole day to, to the max. So we ticked all four, four species in a day. And, and this is the bonus, really, to come into the, uh, the garden and do a bit extra cutting, um, try and get our numbers down in the, in the garden we shot. And the two fallow and a munch jacket, you know, it's like last knocking. So I think, I'm happy now, I can call it a day. <laughs> I felt like I'd done a day's work. And did the most important thing, tested the scope to its max. Um, I feel we've done every situation in one day. Not every species, but we've done four species. Pushed it, poor light, close close range shooting, stalking, off the bipod for longer distance shooting, quick shooting. I think we test it any more apart from smashing it or something, but absolutely brilliant. Paul's showing how easily accessible deer stalking is there. Four out of Britain's six deer species in a single day. Now, someone else who's easily accessible, but only in certain nightclubs, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The UK government briefly made gun ownership a terrorist offence last week. When it realised its error, the government changed its advice in its Action Counters Terrorism leaflet, when it suggested that all British gun owners should be reported to the police for terrorism. A shooter has saved a deer tangled in netting. Colin Asquith from Yorkshire freed the roebuck and posted the video on Facebook saying, my good deed for the day. Antes, take note, hunters are not totally kill crazy. An international plan to make beaver traps more humane will have a knock-on effect on stoat trapping in the UK. Bureaucrats started work in 1997 on the agreement on international humane trapping standards between the EU, Russia, Canada and the United States. They expect their work to be complete in 2018. Your tax pounds hard at work. As Norway opens sport hunting of its 65 wolves, in Russia they're taking a more robust view of their wolf population. An NP in the Yakutia region, home to 12,000 wolves, is backing a plan to sell helicopter wolf hunting trips at $15,000 a time. Boasting it'll be easy money, he told a local newspaper. This is like shooting sparrows from a cannon. And finally, an American shooter has built and fired a punt gun. Bob Vogel's invention fires 11 ounces of shot using 650 grains of black powder, about the same as 10 12-bore loads. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, during the spring, Roy makes peculiar noises and puts on strange headgear in order to woo his falcons, but he's managed to squeeze in a few minutes foxing for us. Roy loves his lamping, but it's the challenge of daylight foxing that gets his blood pumping. As a last hurrah before he disappears into a world of nest building and egg laying, he's after some lamb ready foxes and he's using the outing to reconnect with his new skills. It was while out on a driven hunt in Sweden after attending the Aimpoint Academy that he shot a fox on the run. This experience has led him to rethink his daylight foxing setup. This morning we want to get out and try and clear up a few foxes because obviously spring is on its way so all the lambs are going to be coming around and obviously all the, the young deer are not going to be far off as well. Normally when we're doing this, I normally carry a rifle and a shotgun. But after going to Aimpoint to their academy, and then I went back over uh, doing some driven game using the Aimpoint. I'm absolutely sold on it for a, a close range ball. So rather than taking the shotgun and the rifle this morning, I've put an Aimpoint on the Tika. Um, and it should be absolutely superb for calling in foxes close up. 
no magnification whatsoever. So as we're looking through, as the foxes are coming up, we should just be able to pick them up and shoot quickly, hopefully. Shooting moving animals is normal on the continent, not so normal in the UK. Like any shot, it comes down to whether or not you can take it. The responsibility is yours. So with a lighter load, Roy finds a suitable foxy area. He knows this ground like the back of his hand, and this spot has produced the goods before. I've got a nice little corridor here, the wind is coming across us. So what I've done is I've put our backs basically to the fence line here, so hopefully the fox won't come around behind us and come into the field behind us and come up. If the one comes, it will literally come straight up this fence line here, or come out of the thick branch in front of us there. If one comes out at a distance there, then Dom's just set up over there to take it. Even though there's no visible reaction here, you never know what you might have stirred up in the neighbourhood. Roy had spotted him much earlier, allowing all of us to take cover. The fox settles just yards in front, chewing on a deer leg bone. I was thinking about calling it, but whilst they're eating like that, you stand more of a chance of actually spooking them a little bit, um, especially as we were that close to it. So I thought it was just easier just to bring the rifle up and take the shot. Nice little dog there, so it would be nice to pick up a vixen or two, but, but at least it's one out of the way, so we'll try and see if we can find a few. In the end it's a straightforward shot, but had it bolted, Roy felt he had it covered. As the rain gets heavier, Roy calls it a day, and this could be the last we will see of him for a bit. We will try to catch up with him in between rearing baby birds. Harry Potter had liquid luck, Roy has Lupton luck. Very good shooting there. Now let's go to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Nordica Outdoors gets in touch from Denmark. Here is his film looking forward to the new Roebuck season ahead, aren't we all? With lots of pretty shots of deer with the sea behind. Rich Hunting in the Netherlands is probably voting this week. This is earlier, happier times as he goes goose shooting. He reckons the Netherlands is becoming a mecca for goose shooting. Oops, probably the wrong word there. Nicely talked through this film of Corvid control. Elliot is on his local permission explaining how he died into birds at range and how to gauge windage when the battery on your anemometer has died. A spot of night vision next. Peter Nobes in Australia has six foxes over the weekend using an ATN x 2 HD 5 to 20 times smart rifle scope. In the USA, the brilliantly named Team Radical is coyote hunting using thermal digital night vision and infrared. This is the seventh in Team Radical's Dirt Naps series. You don't have to speak a word of German to understand what's going on in this very German story of the Border Terrier. Lovers of the Scottish breed will like this film, which shows how Germany has adopted it for driven big game hunting. French driven game hunter Philu Hunting pulls off one of the shots of his life, a running deer at 120 metres. There are some good camera angles and quite a lot of ooh la la in this film. And finally, you have heard of falconry. While other people shoot mink on sight, mink man Joseph Carter keeps them and uses them like ferrets. His YouTube channel is stepping up a gear, and here is his intro to the sport of minkenry. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you, click on the link or go to bit.ly slash hunting youtube 381. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well that's it for this week, if you haven't done so already pop over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, you can also pop your email into our register form and we'll send you news of this show. Field Sports Britain is at 7pm UK time every Wednesday and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>